Hey guys, just a quick bit of information. I actually already made a little video for you. It's going to be added on the end of this one. This is just a bit of an intro to show you the other side. This is a really important bit of information regarding intercoolers, information regarding intercoolers and catch cans and whether you need a catch can or not and why. Um, just showing you some uh, information firstly. This is the um, intercooler which is bolted to the radiator. You can see the tubes, those are the tubes run along, they're 600 mil long. There's approximately, probably exactly, but we'll say approximately to cover myself, 34 of those, okay? They're approximately 5 mil wide, 20 mil long, and about, sorry, 600 mil long, 20 mil deep is what I was trying to say. They go down 20 mil, right? So the air flows through these little cooling fins, and the, those fins, the heat from the tubes, that's what cools the air, okay? So uh, we're not getting an explanation too much. I just want to show you. So sit tight. We're going to turn it over and show you the horrifying amount of oil in this intercooler. Hey, guys. I've got some really important information here in regards to intercoolers and catch cans, if you like. A uh, little bit to do with intercoolers and catch cans. So this is a radiator. It's just been removed out of a 150 Prado. It's not about the radiator. It's about the intercooler that came out with it. Um, there's people around the internet that show you bottles full of oil telling you the, the intercooler is full of oil and people tell you how inefficient it is with the coating of oil on the inside of the intercooler. So there's a couple of things I'd like to demonstrate here and then we're going to measure exactly how much oil comes out of this intercooler. Now we've had it sitting up like this for quite some time, allowing all the oil to drain. Now nobody's touched it, it hasn't been cleaned so you can see on the outside where the hose come off, you know, a little bit dirty. Um, but I'm going to show you inside, and some of you might be horrified, um, but I'm going to explain it to you, right? Remembering the intercooler is 600 millimeters wide. Well, the body, actual whole body is bigger than that, but the actual um, tubes are 600 mil long. There's 34 of them. Um, they're about 20 mil deep and about 5 mil. So about 5 by 20 times 34, there's quite a lot of air going through this. It's not like a radiator, okay? This is the radiator, a lot thinner, thinner material and smaller. This is the intercooler. Now let's have a look. Hold your breath. Sit down before I show you this because you might feel sick. I'm not talking about that mud there. I'm talking about the oil in the intercooler. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Okay, so some people are telling you, firstly, the first myth is if you look at that surface right there, see that shiny surface around there and down there? It is spotlessly clean, right? And I'm going to demonstrate. Nobody's cleaned it. You can see the oil there. It's been placed like this as it came out of the car. I've got witnesses here. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, so I'm going to get my finger here, right? You know when you eat a packet of chips? You shouldn't do that. It's bad for you, right? But a bit like chips on cars, bad for you. But look, you get a bit of oil on your finger straight away, right? My hands are clean. You can see there it is. Now I'm going to rub my finger on that steel there and then show you. Can you see how much oil's there? Any dirt, any oil, anything? Right? Let's go again. Let's go further down. Down there. I'm not going to go in that pool of oil. And we're going to tell you where that oil came from and exactly how much there is. No myths. No smoke and mirrors. Okay? But I'm going to go down, right down the bottom there with my finger. Like this. Hear, hear the noise? I'm rubbing. That's the inside of the intercooler. Let's turn around and have a look. See the end of my finger? Barely. And that's a lot of rubbing. Barely even got it. You know? That's so clean. I would eat, I would eat a packet of chips, you know, with that finger, it's that clean. There's nothing in there. Let's have a closer look. That surface there, clean and dry. There's not enough oil there to affect the thermal efficiency of that, um, you know, of the air, the intercooler doing its job whatsoever. So if you're putting a catch can on for that purpose, you know you're wasting your time. Now, the concerns about the oil here, okay. As I said, there's 34 tubes that are 5 mil wide. Okay, they're 20 by 5 mil. That's quite large. What's that cubic? I haven't done any calculations. You mathematicians, you can do the 5 by 20 and work it out times 34. There's massive amounts of air flowing through this intercooler. The only place the oil is, is in the bottom tube. Okay, it's in the bottom tube. It's not full. Even if it was completely blocked, you've still got 33%, 33 of 34 flowing, right? Um, but it's not completely blocked. That's a whole length of 600 millimetres. So what we're going to do, I've watched this oil over the last sort of, since it was tipped up there for the last approximately uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, fill up there. So what we've got, what size syringe have we got here? Can we just um, get that in the, what do we got, a 10 mil syringe? We've got, we've got the doctor here. Okay, so if you could please demonstrate, let's remove this oil. 
and I've seen less oil in intercoolers also, okay? So it is going to vary. All right, we're going to uh, extract the oil. 10. 10 cc's, that is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit under, but pretty close, yeah? That's good. Let's pump that off into there. 10 mil. A lousy 10 mil, right? People put bottles up, like 600, 700 mil bottles, litre bottles, and they have them nearly full, and they're trying to make out like that's the oil coming out of an intercooler. This is nearly 200,000 Ks, right? And it's not going to make any difference from 20,000 Ks to 200 to 600 because the intercooler can't fill up with oil because the air is flowing through there at quite a fast rate. You can imagine, it's just going to get pushed through, right? It's mainly the fumes, the oil fumes, but that little residue you get. How are we going here? What do we got? Let me see. Just yeah. probably about nine. About nine. So we'll call it 10. We'll give it the benefit mm. of the doubt. And we'll overestimate, all right? So mm. another... 9 or 10 mil, whatever. Yeah, we just got sprayed in oil. There you go, not really. It's just about all gone. But anyway, let, let's go for a last suck, right? So we're scratching to get 20 mil out of there. If we wiped every last bit from in there with a the rag, what would you say, about 22 mil maybe? You know? Not even. Not even, exactly. This, rest assured guys, this is the lowest point. I just want to show you. Everything's going to run down. This is the low point right here, okay? We've got it sitting up on a approximately 40 degree angle, bringing all the oil down to the bottom here. Right, what do we get? No, that's nothing, it's not even measurable. Okay, so look, in here, if you let it sit and you wiped it out, I've seen intercoolers, guys, I've seen intercoolers where we've done this and there's no oil there. There's like, must be less than five mil. So this is probably one of the bad ones. Nearly 200,000 Ks, right? 20 mil of oil, we'll call it, in round figures. Mm. If you got every last bit with a rag and waited, maybe, I don't know, a couple of days, you might get another three or four mil tops, I reckon. Mm. Mm. Anyway, guys, there's the real information. If you want real information, if you like that, if you learned something from that, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to stick to only the real accurate information, make sure you subscribe here. Turn that bell on so you don't fall behind. And watch two videos a day, you'll get yourself educated. Thanks for watching. Catch up. You know what? In conclusion, we will just quickly tell you the base operation of the intercooler. It's much like a radiator. Here we've got the radiator. You can see it's finer, smaller tubes. See the size of those tubes? They're about one millimeter wide. A lot lighter, smaller material as well. Very similar with the cooling fins though, right? So what's going on here? These are bigger because a lot more air capacity needs to flow through them, okay? So obviously there's warm air flowing through these tubes that are 5 mil wide, 600 mil long. Comes in one side and the idea is that it's cooler by the time it gets to the other. So the air passes through in between the tubes past these cooling fins. And that these cooling fins, they take the heat from the tubes. Okay, and as the air goes through and cools these fins, then the heat transfers into these fins, right? And it just continuous process, ongoing. So it is mostly important that you've got a good airflow through these fins so this can do its job not so much the coating of oil inside as you've seen so as i said already it's a butter bing butter boom subscribe put that bell on more real information coming your way thanks for watching guys see ya